Joined as always by my two friends, two only two friends in the world, uh, Gary, Aww. <laughs> who's binary Gary on the internet. I feel like you're pointing that way. I am pointing that way, and that's where you. Oh, are, are you? Yeah. That's funny because on my screen, that's not where. Well, you're pointing. That's where, that's, that's where I'm pointing on the reflection. So where you are pointing is probably the opposite when this gets rendered. Anyway, and uh, Allison who's Allison Plus on the internet. And I am Jazz Sequence on the internet, and we're collectively Binary Jazz, this podcast about things where uh, Allison typically will give us a topic and we don't know anything about it. And, uh, well, you know, Allison obviously knows about it, but, but Gary and I don't know anything about it, and we're attempting to decipher the alien chimes that are occurring in uh, the background. I was just about to ask, is somebody casting a spell, or are there just wind chimes? <laughs> so... <laughs> on brand those are wind chimes that Rhonda got me for Christmas a couple years ago and they are um there are five notes uh, when the wind blows the right way it is the opening notes from um the planets Mars that's amazing. which I know right it's so fucking cool <laughs> that's very on yeah you're right okay very on brand acceptable yeah. wind chime purchase <laughs> I, I and I, I apologize the microphones tend to pick them up much louder than they really are uh I will enjoy them. Sorry for your hearing. <laughs> yeah, no, it just it was just a little bit distracting, and and I was wondering if you were actually uh, successfully communicating with uh with aliens. Would it be cool if I just like disappeared while that was happening, and just like my laptop fell and just like broadcasting like my dirty <laughs> floor. Well, he's been taken up. Yeah, it would be the, well, it, the we'll, least weird news item this week. We'll we'll be sure and tell you. <laughs> yeah, about that not even top ten. Yeah, if you yeah if you just let me know if I've been removed. Take him to a UFO. Okay. The topic this week. Oh, were we done with the intros? Oh, we don't have to be. I mean, you can continue with intros. If you no, want. I have nothing to say. I just wasn't yeah. sure. I, I wasn't paying. I don't pay attention to the But intros, do we ever have anything? I, do I don't think the point of this is that we ever have anything to say. <laughs> really. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a great description of where we are. Yeah, so... Because I never cool. show up being like, I really have something to say this week. I'm going to make a statement. <laughs> oh, still depressed about last week's conversation. So topic this week. What oh, was last week's conversation depressing? Yeah. About capitalism and oh, okay. robots replacing humanity. Oh, you walked away with a different vibe. I walked away with an okay vibe. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you walked away with an okay vibe. Because I, I walked away and was like, oh, crap. Maybe I don't want to be living in the now, here and now. There's not a you, good time to you live. Want, you want to be living in the there and then? <laughs> no, because that also sucked. <laughs> well, I know, but like it's all relative and like you're a white man. So like time yeah. travel is a little easier <laughs> for you than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Once you discover yeah. the secret to time travel, that is. Yeah, what I, what, what I need to get on that. What have I been doing here? I feel like you're Roping just about not job. time traveling. Yeah. You're yeah. working the nine to five, just living your life. Not truly invested in the cause, clearly. Yeah, well, you're not wrong, Allison. You're not wrong. My topic this week has nothing to do with time travel or I, I was trying to think of, of how, I was trying to think of, of like uh, an analogy to the time traveler's wife. Oh. And like, I was trying to think of like, what you would need to be to be the time traveler in the time traveler's wife and like what what factors in your life would contribute to you being the time traveler and i was i was gonna say like oh you just need to do whatever that thing is and realizing that and like i was stuck on this like while well, you like you two were talking i was stuck on this idea and like there's there accidentally travel through time i guess yeah you trip <laughs> happen upon a girl that will be your become your future wife in some variation of 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 shifting through time yeah has there been a good time travel movie lately 
or has there been a time travel movie lately? Maybe I should take out the good qualifier. I don't think there's, yeah, I think time travel as a movie is typically a a poor. Can you ask that question about time travel movie and put the qualifier lately in there? The whole premise of time travel is that everything happened recently or will happen in in the next minute or so. So every time travel movie was like lately or recently. I feel like there was like a string of like, maybe I'm just making it up in my head. I feel like there was time travel for the show. Well, there was that, yeah, there was that, oh, I don't know. I don't have a good enough memory for films to go down this road. I'll be like, there was that one with that guy and they got (laughs) stuck in the elevator. Don't you remember that time travel movie? I'm pretty sure that was probably in the late 90s, so. Uh, The last, the most recent time travel movie that I remember was like an indie movie that was like a Sundance film. And it was super low budget, and they like built this box um, that was a, that traveled through time. It was like super weird, suspenseful thing. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what it's called now. There's those aliens again. Um, yeah, for the record, I haven't. I never watched the Time Traveler's Wife movie. I read the book. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm. I haven't seen the movie. I wonder if it's worth it. I we decided <laughs> that that was one of those things that the movie would ruin it. Yeah, sometimes I just don't need to see things like kind of flushed out on screen in that way where I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, like Hunger Games, we saw all of the Hunger Games and we, and it ruins the book, but like it's also just like eye candy. Um, yeah. So like that's like for for the purpose of eye candy, then then yeah, okay. I don't feel like it ruined the book. I feel like I feel like well, there ruin, was, it, ruin is harsh. It was not. It was not as good as. The it was not faithful to it, yeah. and there was a lot of context that was lost. But, but the, the eye candy was pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. I liked. I liked seeing how they made certain things super visual. But, I still. I don't know. But I'm always that person that's like, I enjoyed the books more. Like. Yeah, but that's totally like that's that's that's, that's legit, totally right? like a cool thing. Yeah, like. Yeah. I'm glad for you. <laughs> like we never <laughs> watched, kind of we person. haven't watched, we haven't watched well, the Hobbit because what could that, what could that movie or series of movies possibly add to the story other than just being just, just really drawing out all of the action stuff, which I know because I've read reviews that that's what it does. So like, this has got nothing that it can give me. That's it. I was, I was uh, thinking the other day, there's um. I saw the preview for the new Little Women that's coming out in a little later in the fall, or maybe it's coming out. It's probably a Christmas release, actually, even as I'm talking, I should know better. (laughs) Thanksgiving or Christmas release for sure. Um, American Thanksgiving. (laughs) Um, But I was like, oh, I should reread Little Women. And then I was like, oh, I should reread Lord of the Rings. And then I was like, I should reread all these things. And I was like, or I could read new things, but... I don't know. Anyway, I started going down this path of like, <laughs> it's been however many years. So but maybe I'll just read more fiction. Of the Rings. <laughs> My default, like when I'm like, I want to read a book is like, what technical book should I read? And <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, ooh, I'm going to curl up with uh, clean code for the seventh time. Oh, no. But I like, just- did you enjoy reading fiction or no? Because some people. Oh yeah, don't. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I get yeah, I get lost in the universe. Yeah, okay. it's so, tough to come out. Like you close the book and you're like, oh, okay, well, crap, still here. So do you, you just know? need recommendations to steer you away? Oh, say that again. Sorry. Do you just need recommendations to steer you away from clean code? <laughs> no, I have plenty of books that I want to read. Oh, okay. Um, I just. I need to read those instead. I realize I'm about to like order another technical book for my Kindle today. <laughs> I just finished a book about uh, soccer and globalism. Oh yeah, I was gonna add that to my list. My incredibly long <laughs> to read. I finally book. finished it. I was I felt so proud of myself. It's like the first book I've finished in like I don't know five years. <laughs> I think that, I remember that I'm, not, that I'm not reading to the kids, which I don't, I, I, that counts, I guess, because most of those books I'm reading to the kids, I haven't read either. Um, but I also don't count that because I'm not reading it for myself. All of the books that I'm reading now for them, I'm 
both reading them for myself and also reading them. <laughs> You're like, it's a dual purpose here. I'm getting lots of enjoyment out of it. Well, and a lot of the books that we have read, like we decided that I decided that we should just own them. Like there's, there's a, there, I think I told you guys about this uh, series about um, this, uh, the, it's called, the series is The Grim Legacy, I believe is the name of the series. Oh, yeah, yeah. I added this to my list. Yeah. Again, my very, I'm like slowly, like I add many more books to my list than I actually read in a year. Yeah, that was something that I think, I don't remember how, we, we got it from the library, I don't remember who picked it out, but that ended up being really good, and then we read, we read the other books in the series. <sighs> Excuse me, sorry. Anyway, you're not boring me, today. I'm just appreciating all this fresh air. And... <laughs> the topic for this week is Parkinson's Law. Ooh. And I guarantee it's a thing that you know of, you just don't know that it's a thing. <laughs> but what, uh, is, well, what is Parkinson's Law not, maybe, would be a better... <laughs> wow. wow. That's not quite a <laughs> pitch. What is Parkinson's Law not? No, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm just screwing around. Uh, well, uh, as we all know, Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Uh, I go too dark. I, well, that's where, I mean, that's, that's when <laughs> you obvious should, path. Yeah. yeah. So not sure how Parkinson's, we can go any other direction. Yeah. Parkinson's disease is when you sort of, um, start, uh, mentally degenerating. So Parkinson's law would therefore be, uh, named by the same person, Dr. Parkinson. Uh, and uh, he, the law is that over time, your uh, memories will fade into nothingness. Sadly, it's, it's more than that. <laughs> Parkinson's law is that eventually you will fade into nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of brings a full circle to like a back to the future situation where you're like fading out of the photo. Oh, I mean, to be honest, that was the last Wind good, uh, just... <laughs> the you last know? good time travel movie. <laughs> oh yeah, when was the last time I watched Back to the Future? All three of them. They're really good. Yeah, it, it wasn't that long They're ago. Really weird, though. I mean, like the time travel movie. John Mulaney does that good bit about Back to the Future about how when they pitched it, it's just like you go back and like he felt like he averts his mom's like advances and then say like when you describe the plot out loud it is like super weird but. <laughs> i love the take that futurama had on that when um they travel back to the 50s remember this episode and fry becomes his own grandfather after hooking up with his grandmother hmm. his, grand his grandfather is actually gay <laughs> and they're like he like fry and trying to preserve his own life takes his grandfather out to like a house in the middle of nowhere and his grandfather's like you ever feel like you go with girls just because you're supposed to and then flips like the the calendar and there's like a it's like every other month in the calendar is like male female spread right and then the nuclear bomb goes off and kills his grandfather and Fry's not dead because he hooked up with his grandmother and oh it's such a such a great episode of Futurama. They covered a lot of ground for such a uh like a concise because it's only a half hour right it is, and y yes, it is, and every episode, not every episode, there's some crappy episodes. There's some really good episodes, though. They tackle never, some really fun things. I never, I never got into Futurama. At the time, I was just like, oh, this is just a sci-fi derivative of, of The Simpsons, and I, that, that I think initially it was. Jerk, that initial knee-jerk reaction, I think, colored my perception of something that would have otherwise been really good, but um, Disenchanted is coming. Season two of Disenchanted. Is yes. Coming. Yeah. But like, let's let's stop for a minute though on Futurama. It was way ahead of its time. Like the opening, the first episode where Bender goes into the suicide booth and like tries to get a twofer, right? With with somebody. Like, okay, when that came out, like ah, that was kind of dark humor. Now, like with like the whole like Twitter humor vibe, like people like that. I feel like if you started an episode that way, I think you would immediately have a massive following, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I I think it was considering, well, considering it came out the popularity right? considering the popularity of Rick and Morty. Yep, there's yeah, sure, there you go. Example. Yeah, yeah. And I saw someone was like Rock. Was it Rocco's Modern Life came back on Netflix? And I was like, I don't know if I was looking for that. 
Yeah, have you watched any of it? No, I haven't. But oh. I wasn't, I never really watched the original, so I was like, I don't really know if, like, I'm the... Yeah. I'm like, curious if there was actually a storyline, because I only caught episodes here and there, and yeah. I wonder if there was, like, a cohesive thing. It always you know? struck me as kind of like a watered-down Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> I don't know. But again, that's just, like, my bias. It could just have been what I assumed. We've been watching shit. Parkinson's Law is states that um, TV shows that do not reach a high enough level of critical success are destined to come back on Netflix. Be relaunched as a new series. High enough critical. They do not receive high enough critical success. Yeah, critical like Seinfeld. There will never be like a relaunch of Seinfeld or Friends. That's because But these like second tier very rich. <laughs> but these second tier shows, right? That nobody got rich from will all relaunch because there's money in branded lunchboxes. I don't know if that's accurate because um, I just read that the new NBC streaming service is going to have a relaunch of Battlestar Galactica. Um, and the first Battlestar Galactica, that would have been true about. But the second Battlestar Galactica, that was not true about. And now, I, and it makes me wonder, is this going to be spinning off the second one or if it's going to be spinning off the first one? If it's spinning it's, off the first one, it's, it's going to be horrible. Yeah. If it's spinning off the second one, it might be okay, except for the fact that they totally wrapped up and then fucked up the plot at the end. So remember this, though. Parkinson's law is like the law of gravity, right? It's really a theory that we can't prove. Or I see. A law. So we just will we never just call know. It a law. We just will yeah. never know. Maybe Parkinson's law is when you're in denial of the first two series of Battle, Battle Star Collective. <laughs> <laughs> and you just start completely fresh as if the other two didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I, I have an idea for a, a, a show. It's in space. <laughs> on on what we call a battle star and and this what? battle star is called the galactica i'm in what what um what do we think about like the upcoming picard series i am always up for more picard i'm always up for uh patrick stewart um yeah. pretty much whenever yeah but it just seems yeah it's been a long time since since the next generation, uh, and I mean, it would be a hard sell to get Aaron on board because she was never a Trekkie, and and like there's too much, there's too much like uh, forgiveness given to the series as like for nostalgia, mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm when you take the nostalgia part away and start coming into this thing fresh, it's like, what the fuck am I looking at? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's, uh, that applies slightly, a, a lot less uh, to the next generation because that series was actually good, but you still have to have a, an entry point. And without an entry point, it's like, I still don't know why I'm watching this space soap opera. So I, I grew up on Star Wars and I got into Star Trek very late just in the last few years and the star trek universe is so much that's the universe i want to live in right like i don't want i don't want like i don't know you want less rebellion more like structure <laughs> i think i but i don't think there's less rebellion i just think that, that the story's told from the from the other side right like you could chase down anywhere where they show up and there's some kind of conflict and you could tell the whole story from that perspective and, and throw in some guys in robes with like lightsabers and, and, <laughs> and you're kind of there, right? It's a perspective of, like the Star Wars perspective is a lot more limited, I think, than the yeah, Star Trek perspective. Sure. The Star Trek perspective is there are lots of people that do weird things in the galaxy. <laughs> and just because we think they're weird doesn't mean they're wrong. I like that you just like summed up Star Trek in like one. Because <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, I guess I'll be restarting that series soon. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched, yeah, I, The Next Generation. How long does it take to go through The Next Generation, I wonder? 
wonder how many hours of, of footage there I are. I don't know. Like it's, it's a lot. Yeah. You don't do it. You don't do it like in a couple months. Like, you know, it's a or, long. I mean, commitment. we tried. We, we, the thing is, I think that we've tried so hard to get into like various other space operas. Like yeah. we did Babylon 5 and we did. Oh, what was that one? Enterprise. No, 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 no. <laughs> so bad. Um, but there is watch every episode of it. <laughs> there is one. There is one. I can't remember the name now, but it was it was made with the Jim Henson company. Um, so like all the aliens were were like giant like Muppet things. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but that was also horrible. So like we've gotten burned so many times by like these various different space operas that like it, it it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell to start that genre again like i'm always up for it but like did you did you catch the series ascension on netflix it ran one season have we talked about it before no we didn't i didn't do ascension because that looked almost exactly like another show that wasn't on netflix that was about basically the same thing like aliens coming in like just sort of occupying the space like just outside the um the atmosphere and like trying to sort of take Maybe it's over not ascension planet. what's the what's the show i'm talking about then i'm just mm. glad that patrick stewart is attached to yes it. so i yeah. feel like that's i'm optimistic it's definitely about a that. saving grace yeah because yeah. <laughs> i feel like um, he doesn't need to be attached to things like he doesn't need to so i feel like he's at the point where he can just pursue what he actually wants to do so i'm like oh so there must be something about this that's alluring yeah Ascension was the one I had to confirm. Ascension was a series where you start and it's like a 50s style um, culture on this sh like generation ship traveling. Oh, somewhere. that one. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Did see that one. The, yep. The premise was so good that I could not watch, but the acting was so poor that <laughs> I couldn't so, give it all of my attention. So, not so. worth a watch then. <laughs> I mean, I will consume all space programs on Netflix, so technically, yes, it's worth a watch. <laughs> yeah, Ascension was the one where but they had- But it barely they, squeaks in. They were afraid of like a nuclear, uh, a nuclear, just like mutually assured destruction sort of scenario. So they sent up like a, a, a ship with lots of, like a, a basically sort of like a colony ship to go into space and, yes. and stay there and then come back. Um, to earth when it was safe to do so or something so they built and, this whole like civilization in this long-running space station thing yes and the yes and it was called I and give the you ship the was, spoiler i, I want to give the spoiler but yeah the ship was called the ascension do you want the spoiler you saw the, the movie I saw it. okay <laughs> what was the and then the other one and i know we talked about this one the, the movie travelers hmm. um would have been so much better as a series i would have watched the hell out of that <laughs> The whole first season, you could have had like, what's his face wandering around like as the only actor in the series, like figuring out this ship and the ship is a personality in itself, obviously, but like figuring out how to feed himself and stuff. And and then the and then the end of the first season, he's deciding whether he wakes what's her head up or not. Like, I mean, I I would have been on, like, I would have been it would have been a cliffhanger for the entire obviously. Ah, oh, would have been amazing. And they went and threw it out as a movie, and it was a waste. It would have been so much better as a TV series. This whole conversation is reminding me that I wanted to see whether my library had sliders on DVD. Mm. So I was mm. like, I wonder if this holds up. I'm just kind of, because I tried to watch X-Files and like a lot of the episodes are good, but then a lot of them aren't good <laughs> um, as a series. So I was just like, sliders, I have just such random memories of, even though I watched it regularly. So I'm I, curious. Yeah, I tried, I tried watching um, Quantum Leap uh, after the fact. Yeah. It doesn't hold up. The, the most recent... Sad. Uh, I have really good memories of Quantum Leap, and they're, yeah. they're best left as memories. The new X-Files that came out recently was just okay, but there was that one episode... Yeah, and they, it was so disappointing that it was just okay. I was like, I watched one episode, like, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. That episode where they tackled, um, like, AI and, like, Amazon and stuff head-on, like, I still have nightmares about that episode. It was so good. It was so hokey and cheesy. But like I sit up and I'm like in a panic about artificial intelligence and where that goes. So it was effective. <laughs> oh, have either of you watched the new Dark Crystal series? Not yet. No. I'm saving it. 
I will be curious to hear your thoughts. I've only watched one episode, so. Yeah, no, I, we're sort of saving it, uh, I think, so that we can watch it with the kids. We've been watching, uh, we've been exposing the kids to Black Adder. We just got through the first season of Black Adder. Nice. Um, and, and Lila's like, so is he like actually dead? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the series is over. But we will continue. <laughs> And then it made me wonder after that that if if he dies at the end of each series, because I can't remember now. I can't remember like that specifically. I know at the end of the World War II series, he definitely it's not it's not shown that he dies, but it's implied because they're they're like once more into the breach and then bang yeah. bang bang. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I have those vague. Now I'm like maybe I'll rewatch this. Parkinson's Law is that you're is, going to forget the endings of every TV show that you loved. I just realized it has nothing to do with television. <laughs> <laughs> it, Parkinson's Law is that when you discuss food, you get hungry. And that's why it's so appropriate for this show. <laughs> well, we haven't discussed food at all in this episode. And we that's why Gary's that. not hungry. I was just thinking that... I am hungry, and we need to talk about food. <laughs> we need to talk about it. Wait, but that would be reverse Parkinson's, Parkinson's law. Reverse Parkinson's. No, it's it's because we we talk about food so often. Seeing the two of you makes me hungry. Ah, now so it's it's a Pavlovian <laughs> response. That, I am drooling just, on myself, so yeah, I, I definitely. <laughs> that just seeing us triggers the the I want food response. Yeah, yeah. hilarious. <laughs> kind of like. I don't think that's actually true. I think it's just timing that I don't eat large enough breakfasts breakfasts it's a weird word and um <laughs> i need to get better at breakfasts yeah so. i did there was this weird thing that Rhonda found and it's like a you pour this stuff in a mug and you stir it up and it makes like a pancake bite type thing you nuke it for a minute and a half and it was fine that's what i ate this morning i much prefer grits i had some really good grits this weekend gosh i love grits Maybe well, I'll have breakfast. I've never, had a, I've never had a grit. A grit? Let alone it's hard to eat. Just, you, can't just eat, you can't eat just one. It's the original. You can't eat just one, right? Yeah. You ever eaten grits like in general, Chris, or no? Yeah. No. But I mean, I've had, I've had polenta, and I know that they're you know, similar-ish. It's similar, yeah. 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 And family. Yeah. So Parkinson's Law. Yes. My last guess is it has something to do with the trajectory of golf balls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In what way? Well, I don't know. That's the part of the that's show. That's that... the part. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Oh, is this the part where I actually Yeah, tell you? I, think, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Parkinson's Law is an adage... Which is interesting. So then I went down this road of like, what exactly? What is an adage? Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's basically that work expands to fill the time available for completion. Oh, that's that's actually true and provable. So it's so, often applied okay. to the growth of bureaucracy in companies and organizations where it's like, oh, yeah. if you're given a week for a task, you will take a full week for that task. Even if, if you were given an hour for the task, you would easily complete it in an hour. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So that is, that's totally a true thing. Um, and there are ways to combat that. Like, yeah, but yeah, that's a thing. And some people and really use it to their advantage, but because they can like trick themselves and set their own, like setting your own deadlines for things. Yeah, sometimes like three hours, so I get it done in three hours, yeah. So is Parkinson's law, I mean, is the Parkinson namesake, uh, the same Parkinson who is also the namesake of Parkinson's disease, or is, is it a different Parkinson? I think it's a different Parkinson's. It's Cyril Northcote Parkinson. I believe. Northcote. He's a naval historian. He and this was like his notable work. But I don't Naval think historian. I, 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 I mean, I know what it is, obviously, but I like to think about it as like someone who just like pulls up their shirt and looks for a long time. <laughs> Let me tell you a thing. 
It's always uh, been an innie, but not the same depth. Hmm. He wrote a lot for The Economist, not shockingly. So yeah, probably probably a different Parkinson than some Parkinson's disease. Do you think that um, certain people, like, I don't want to use the word suffer, but certain people are more prone to applying Parkinson's law, like filling the time with the I think we're past? Easily, I think we're easily conditioned. Mm. Mm. Because it's like, if I'm told that a task will take a week, I might think it's more complicated than, like, if I complete it in a day, I might panic and be like, oh, did I just do this wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or did I do oversimplify whatever they were actually asking? Um, but that's, I think, well, solved by communication and, like, an actual understanding of the task as well. Maybe, yeah, maybe the idea when they said a week was they thought you had other stuff to do, and so it would take a week you know, a couple hours a day versus I did it all in one day. It feels like there's, it feels like Parkinson's law is the result of like lack of communication. <laughs> I, uh, I've had many occasions where, uh, and in recent, recently where like we've done like our sprint planning or whatever. And we have like, and we look at like what we need to do in the sprint and we're like, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. We'll probably, that'll probably fill, fill up the week or the two weeks or four weeks or whatever we have. And, uh, and then get through like two weeks and be like, okay, we're pretty much done now. So yeah. like, that's like, that's like the opposite of Parkinson's law. I've also had the flip side uh, where, and this like, probably more so in the past uh where i felt like something was done but it really wasn't you know and so like like i gave myself in my head sort of gave myself a certain amount of time but there really wasn't a time frame associated with it and so i just said like, well i think this is good enough like i'm gonna present this thing um but really it, it needed a lot more work there's there's awful there is an awful lot of joking i feel among like developers on estimating tasks like pick a number now double it double it again crumble the sheet of paper throw it away and pick a new number because it was wrong anyway <laughs> like that's that's how you estimate um but but i think to that end like it's really easy um when you've done things several times to say because i've done it several times it's now easy yeah. but the reality is like there are still steps you need to go through so it's no easier it will take no less time because you've done it several times before it will always take a fixed amount of time because there are always these things that you need to do and consider. Um, you just get better at the estimations because you know what to expect more. Yeah, I've, I've, my estimations in the last year have actually gotten longer on quite a few things that are, you know, normal things. Um, and, and then when I deliver an underestimate, that's fine. But it gives me the freedom in some situations to really like sit there and think through, am I just slapping this together or am I delivering like what, makes the most sense for the project there's nuances to everything do you do um do you do you in your work do like time-based estimations like this is going to take x number of hours and like break it down like like look at a feature and say okay that feature this th this part of it's going to take you know this many hours this part or yeah. do you do like uh estimations based on like level of complexity yeah so we do it by hours um and that but then that all can also have ranges like like if it's something complex and there's no way to put like a good estimate, you say, this is complex. Like I need, you know, three business days to think about it and fiddle with some code and see where we go. And after that, maybe I'll adjust my estimate and it might be up or it might be down. Um, and, and, and I, and that's totally like a fair answer. Um, it's the things like the other ones that come in that are, that are hard, like a bug comes in. Well, <laughs> bugs are often like estimate a bug. Well, it's anywhere from 15 minutes to six months, you know, like we either need to like fix a single line of code or we need to re-engineer the entire project. Like it's somewhere in that spectrum. So I often on bugs will just say, oh, I'll look at it or I'll throw three hours on it. And if after three hours, I don't know what's going on. We'll regroup. Um, Cause we, I mean, estimate, like I had a, we estimate uh, in almost every 
uh, scenario based on complexity and not hours. And um, our estimates are, um, we typically use the Fibonacci sequence as a scale. Mm -hmm. So like one is like super quick, could probably do it in a couple hours. Uh, you know, two is like maybe half a day, three is like a full day or, or two days, you know, and goes up from there. And, and also like how each team or each uh, lead engineer weighs uh, each, um, each level of the Fibonacci scale is different. So we're like sort of established, well, this is what the baseline is. Like I, I value a one to take more time than most people, than what a typical one would be because I also in like n under no circumstance is there ever going to be a situation where there's like not testing and QA and like there's always going to be these extra yeah. things that take time. And so in order to accommodate those things, we like a one is not going to be less than an hour because there's going to be time that we're going to need to go back to, to test it or do whatever. Um, yeah. And then if it's like beyond like a 15 or a 21 is like, that's too big. Like we need to break it into smaller pieces because that's, that's too big to, to do. Um, yeah. I, I, there's been cases oh. where I've done um, time-based ones, but that mostly that's like when you're trying to make a proposal or something and we need to like yeah. get an idea of how long something would take. Yeah. Yeah, and, and time, here's the problem with time-based estimates is time is not all equal. Like the work that I do right. between 8 and 10 a.m. I want you to tell that to my clients on my behalf. Be like, listen. <laughs> yeah, tell some clients, not, time is not equal. Time is not equal. Like, you but, can buy my but, best time between 8 and 10 a.m. And I will write some really good code. Or you can have the rest of my day, which is like, who knows what happens. And it's probably equivalent to the first two hours. Like if it's important, 8 to 10 a.m. is when I need to work on it. Anytime outside of that, like, ah, it's getting done. Technically, I'm delivering code. <laughs> um, I mean, I say that a little bit tongue in cheek because it does vary. But there is a very clear time where my brain is engaged and I can fire off some really mm -hmm. good code that I'm proud of. And then, and then, then there's, there's the rest, the rest of, of the time. Yeah, then there's, then there's, then there's the other 90% other of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that applies to everything, though, not just code. Like 20% of my time is really good. The rest of it is like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. You summed up my existence pretty much. What the hell is going on? That's eighty yeah. percent of my day. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. How did how did we get here? What this was not intentional. Just roll with it. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.